New York Times 10 years ago. Life in Canada, home of the world's most affluent middle class. Median income in Canada appears to have surpassed median income in the United States. Oh, what a decade can do. Now, American workers make almost $20,000 more than their Canadian counterparts. They get twice as much investment every single year. The gap between our per capita GDP and that of the United States is now the worst in a century wow. after this Prime Minister's rising taxes, bureaucracy and blocking of energy projects. I know why Harris and Trump want to create jobs for Americans, but why does this Prime Minister want to help them? Here, here. Right. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker. The silence of the Conservative leader is deafening when it comes to what's happening in the South Asian communities right now. And it's a real shame. Not only is he not stepping forward to talk uh, about how all Canadians must stand together and all South Asian Canadians, Sikh, uh, Hindu, uh, Jain, Buddhist, are, are celebrating together this weekend. But he even refuses to take the issue seriously enough to get the security clearance necessary to be briefed on threats to Canada and to Canadians. That's not leadership, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Now you, know, now you know his real agenda. He wants to distract from all the economic misery he's called at home. And so he uses divisions here at home. These divisions are the result of him. Under his leadership, we've seen a 251% increase in hate crimes, firebombings of synagogues, bullets shot at Jewish children's schools, a hundred churches burned and vandalized, and now we see sectarian riots on the street, streets of Brampton. This never happened before this Prime Minister. Does he take ownership for the divisions he's caused and the violence that has resulted? Colleagues, I'm going to ask members, please, uh, especially members from the far end of the House, to please not take the, the not take the floor unless they are recognized by the Speaker. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, people watching that last answer will know uh, and note uh, the assuredness with which the Leader of the Opposition declared all the causes and the sources of uh, the terrible violence we're seeing, when the reality is he refuses to take the necessary briefings that our security agencies are offering him to understand the threats to Canada. Why won't he get the security? Colleagues, it does not do well uh, when on one side of the House is asked to keep quiet, the other side of the House should do the same. All members should do the same. The Honourable Member for Belle Chambly. Mr. Speaker, the government has tabled regulations to cap greenhouse gas emissions. It's a bit complacent because the deadlines are long, extremely long. And uh, it's Quebecers and Canadians who are paying the price. This is going to give polluters a holiday on emissions control. And this regulation is, uh, may appear inadequate given the oil and gas lobby here in the House. Could this not be better done through a statute, the Right Honourable Prime Minister? Mr. Speaker... As a government, we have always chosen to do everything that's necessary to reduce emissions, to protect Canadian prosperity, and to protect Canadians' future. That's why we're moving ahead with a cap on greenhouse gas emissions coming from the oil industry. This is a, an industry that is making record profits, an industry that already has the technology. Te 
technology to reduce emissions. But with this cap, the industry will have to invest to reduce emissions so that everyone does their fair share in reducing emissions and protecting the planet. The Honourable Member for belle chambly instead of considering the green equalization or green banking uh, or funding of green uh, technology, as the bloc has been advocating for a long time. The Prime Minister himself has said that this is an industry whose profits have uh, skyrocketed since the pandemic. Instead of imposing standards that aren't tough enough, why doesn't he impose tougher standards? And that way, he could go before the electorate, finally, with a bold record on the environment. The Right Honourable Prime Minister... Mr. Speaker, I know full well that both the Bloc and we have the same opinion on this. No industry should be allowed to pollute without limit. That's why we have put a cap on greenhouse gas emissions in the oil and gas industry. That industry contributes almost one-third of Canada's annual emissions, and so that industry has a greater capacity to reduce our emissions. They're making record profits, so we agree that they should reinvest in technologies that will help reduce emissions and help them do their fair share. Honourable Member from Burnaby South. Who here doesn't have a family doctor? Well, five million Canadians don't. Now, Loblaws owns Maple, and a family doctor working at Maples will charge you $80 a month per person to see a doctor. Now, things have gotten so bad, this is predatory. The Prime Minister lets you down, and then Galen Weston swoops in to profit off it. Why is this Prime Minister letting Galen Weston profit off of people's pain? The Right right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we recognize that it is the provincial area of jurisdiction to deliver health care in this country, but it is the federal responsibility to make sure that that health care remains public and universal and single-payer. And that is exactly what we're doing by investing a record $200 billion in health care over the coming years uh, that will oblige uh, the provinces to invest in in public health care, to hire more doctors, particularly family doctors, to reduce wait times and to uh, improve their mental health services. These are things that Canadians expect, including the federal government expecting it of the provinces. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. Private health care is a jungle. It could cost $213 for a minor emergency. It's so profitable that real estate investors are opening private clinics. And the prime minister uh, is, will the prime minister finally stand up and put an end to all of this? The right honorable prime minister, Mr. Speaker, unlike the NDP, we understand and respect the fact that the delivery of health care comes under provincial jurisdiction. But the federal government is responsible for ensuring that our health care system remains public and the federal government has to be there to help with the funding. That's why we've put on the table $200 billion in investments for the next 10 years, which will allow for the hiring of more family doctors, uh, reducing wait times, more support for mental health and workers in the system. And that's what all Canadians expect.